Welcome back. It's Thursday, mm -hmm. and it's time for our 13 Reasons Why. It's, it's hard to be too excited about it. It's hard to be, whoa, I'm getting all kinds of feedback. Why is that happening? Is that your phone? There we go. OK. Jeez. Whoa, that, that was, ooh. that was like, that was, all kinds of feedback. Uh, Ah, there it goes again. It goes again. Your phone has a mind of its own. <laughs> it's all over the place. All right. uh, okay. Well, hopefully we still have listeners after Technical that. Technical difficulties. Yes, Man. please hang in there. We'll get this right. My here. goodness. Well, yeah, so it should be back. So mm -hmm. now, welcome back. No, that's right. <laughs> that's that's what, what you were saying, right? That's welcome right. back. Welcome back after those technical difficulties mm -hmm. here. Um, so here we are for our, um, our seventh One, two, three, session. Four. And this, today we're going to talk about tape six, and it's episodes 11 and 12. What? Correct. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. It's the seventh six, session because we did, we did an intro. Right. Uh, that was number one. Mm -hmm. And so today is tape six. Right. And so very excited about this. Th this, is the, this, is the, this is a big week. <laughs> Everybody told me, as we've said before, I've been watching it a week at a time because I didn't want to get... I didn't want to know the ending. Okay, right. so I wanted to bring that perspective. And everybody said, wait till you get yeah. to this tape. And they were absolutely right. This is really compelling. This it's it's so heavy. <laughs> it begins with a yeah. an ambulance scene. Yeah. You know, of a 17-year-old. Well, which 17-year-old right. is, is has a head wound, you know? Yeah. And so you're hooked immediately, and right. then it and it just becomes more compelling as you watch it. Right, right. And I had to confess, I couldn't, I couldn't not watch the last episode. Yeah, I know. I yeah, to you told me that. You told me that this morning. So mm -hmm. it was good. I, I was glad I to, to hear the confession. Right. I had to, had to watch the rest. So of you it. already watched episode thirteen. Yes. So, but we, we will talk about that one next week. And mm -hmm. so next week, the plan for next week, and That's we'll cool. say this at the end too. But plan next week is to talk about episode thirteen, and then to sort of wrap the whole wrap thing up. Right. And. Mm -hmm. um, Kind of talk about what we might do next and kind of go from there. I like the way this whole thing has worked out. I do um, too. I don't, I don't know whether it was this particular um, show or yeah. whether it's the um, the forum or the discussion or whatever, mm -hmm. but this has been um, this has been been fun to do. Yeah, and I hope it's been helpful. Yeah, this morning we recorded the uh, the podcast is actually going to go out tomorrow morning, which is a movie review. Our um, first, our first movie review, and right. it, it was good. It was it was fun talking to you good. about movies because we don't we don't talk about movies <laughs> enough because I don't watch movies. You don't watch movies, right. so but I'm going to change. I see this as an opportunity to to, to introduce to, you to the world that is cinema, the not world cinema, is cinema, cinema. So okay. it's going to be great. I have, I You're have going a, to pull, I'm working on my you list. and my children are going to pull me into the 21st century kicking and screaming okay so I so spent a lot of time in the 19th century <laughs> a long time this is good okay all right you don't want me to go into so, that no 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 that was not an invitation that's right um, it was just as no it wasn't an invitation <laughs> so this is um tape this is tape six six so uh so yeah, and it's going to be um, it's going to be a great discussion because mm -hmm. we have we have so much to talk about it with with these two tapes. Um, well, let me say it again: we have so much to talk about, but it's it's mm -hmm. it's a few things, but it's pretty they're dense. There, there there's a lot, a lot to talk about. Just a couple of things. That's what I noticed about this I, when I was watching it. I wasn't writing as many things down right. as I normally do. Partly because it was so interesting, right. but partly because there are just a few major themes right. in this one. Right. Um, because you know all the characters now, right. and you know all the themes. Yeah. And so, but but the themes in this one yeah. um, are much more significant, much you're, larger. You're right. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna we're gonna start off with our first slide here, and uh, well, there we are today. But this slide here, and so yeah. you know the. The thing that I think really jumped out at the beginning of this episode, episode um, eleven, was you know they're going to the party. Right. And this is this is when they're going. This is kind of returning back to Jessica's party. Back to the the party that we had seen before. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so remember, she said uh, a couple episodes ago that there were multiple things. She's going to take them one at a time. Right. And this right. is the last one um, mm -hmm. as it relates to that party. Right. And so. As she's talking about it, of course, this tape is all about Clay. 
And that's we, right. we, we, that's we right. were introduced to that at the end of the last episode when, mm-hmm. um, when Tony told Clay, you know, this one is your tape. You and have to watch it. Yes. You have to listen to it. Yes, you, you know, he kind of said, yeah, you. Did you, I kill you, Hannah? Yeah. Yes. He said, yeah. Said yes. And it's oh, heartbreaking. But so as it's working up to it, there was a, a line from Hannah that I think mm-hmm. we really – want to dig into a little bit and and it is she was talking about clay and she was talking Mm -hmm. about how confident he is and how and i think she says you you are who you are you don't care what others think and she even goes on to talk about how um you know i'm not like that uh you know even if i look like it or even if i act like it i don't feel that way right and wow it was like she she just encapsulated in the, in those few lines, sort of what we have been talking about throughout this whole um, episode, the, the whole series mm-hmm. that people keep misinterpreting each other. Right. That's right. That, you, she thought that he was this confident, right. you know, mm-hmm. and he had no idea what he right. was doing. <laughs> right. 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 I mean, which we knew through the whole thing. Right. I mean, we knew that. You know, right. Because he was filled with self-doubt. Um, but this is what she says, you know, in the tape, um, you, you are who you are. Right. And right. But, Let me check. And yeah. that's, that's true. I mean, um, she did, she did believe that, um, you are who you are. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's filled with self doubt, but yet he knows he's, a, he knows he's a little bit of a nerd. Right. Okay. And everybody treats him that way. You know, um, everybody else has cars. They drive cars to school. He still has his bicycle. Right. Um, helmet. Yeah, they call him helmet. She calls him helmet. Um, so he 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 and everybody else acknowledges mm-hmm. that he's a nerd, right? But he's comfortable with that. He doesn't try to defend himself. He doesn't right. deny it. Mm-hmm. He's comfortable with that position. But he is very socially awkward, right? You know, he, he, and he doesn't know what to do with girls, and he keeps saying that, right? And, and what's funny, what's great is that. He he goes along with it. That's right. You know that the whole scene when I he's am. leaving the the Crestmont and you know right. he's on the bike and he like pushes off and you know he's like playing he's on his as motorcycle. Right. right. And mm-hmm. and it you know he really just kind of goes along with it without it's, you know yeah he self, doesn't fight it self effacing you know right. I know I'm a geek I know I'm, I know I'm a nerd but it you know oh this is, this comes later in the program but remember when he's at the party and um. Yeah. Jeff comes up to him and he says, dude, you got to get up there. You got to get up to the plate. You just got to swing. And he goes, I know that those are all baseball mm-hmm. references, but if this, if I was going to go along with that, I would have to say, according to my batting average, <laughs> I'm probably going probably. to strike out. And it was like, he tried. <laughs> he really, he really tried right. to stick no, with I'm that, just, but he just, just couldn't do it. You have to love the, I mean, you yeah. just have to, you don't only really like him, you admire him. Yeah that he has these qualities right. and that he's not embarrassed and he doesn't right. apologize and he doesn't try to be something he isn't right. except when he sprays too much cologne yeah. on himself. And, 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 mm-hmm. and that's something that we really, that we have the benefit of as viewers. As viewers. We really get to mm-hmm. see that side of clay, that right. the uncertainty side, mm-hmm. The, mm-hmm. the side where he's trying on different clothes before <laughs> he steps out it takes, and does all those different tucks things. Tucks his shirt in, takes it out. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, because he's going to be the rebel without without his shirt tucked in. Um, we don't get that from Hannah. So we know what we see is Hannah presenting herself, you know, really strong and really confident. Mm-hmm. And except for some of the things that she says in the tapes, we really right. don't get to see her as questioning herself or, you know, really doubting herself. That That's right. We don't really see that. But we have to believe that some of that's going on based upon some of the things she says in the tapes. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that, but she doesn't. It's almost as though she doesn't question mm-hmm. herself, right? I mean, it's you don't really re- get that. There's very little reflection, right? You know, and I, I, I was thinking about that because we, maybe that's what my daughter doesn't. Like I was just going to say I've talked to several teenagers and young adults, and some of the problems that they have with it is they look at Hannah and they say, you know, look, she was doing all these things, she was right. just fine, she was going out, she was. We saw that, but what clay's character demonstrates to us is that 
it, yeah. to, to all of these other students, mm -hmm. he looks just fine. He looks confident. He looks happy and all this kind of stuff. Right. But because we can see behind the scenes with mm -hmm. him, because we're watching from his reference right. point, um, we see the uncertainty. And I think that that uncertainty, I'm, I'm, I would have to believe based upon the, the movie that that same uncertainty is there with Hannah as well. And she's doubting herself. But she, but she lacks that sort of self-reflection right. that he has. Right. You know, that it's always somebody else's fault. And right. This is what they're doing to me. Yeah. And she thinks of herself as an object rather than an agent. And, and I think that, I think that that, well, I want to, let's put a pin in that and say that for the next episode. Um, like oh, in just a few yeah, minutes, yeah, in about 45 minutes, again. because I think mm -hmm. it comes up again. And, right. I, and I think that we're going to be able to identify why. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We're going to be able to identify why she has had that perspective throughout the entire series. Right. Because um, I wonder. because of yeah. what happens at Toward Bryce's. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. So we'll get to that in just a few yeah. minutes. That's going to okay. be exciting. So, so <laughs> well, not really exciting, but well, it's exciting sad. Exciting is okay. Just, oh, that whole scene just makes me so sad. Um, but but again, the, the whole idea here is that the you know they she sees him as this confident, mm -hmm. you know, self-assured, right. you know, this guy, he just is him. Mm -hmm. He you are just you. You are who um, you are. And mm -hmm. and you don't care what other people think. Mm -hmm. And man, did he care what other people thought. Yeah. You know, he, Oh, he especially, her. Yeah, especially, especially her. Especially her. Yeah. So, so that that is adolescence, mm -hmm. um, right. and for many, many teenagers, mm -hmm. that is what they're experiencing. Right. They are struggling on the inside. They're they're struggling with this, trying to develop their self awareness and right. to, to develop their identity, and mm -hmm. they are they are uncertain about everything. That's right. Right. You know, it, the it, uncertainty it, of an adolescent. Right. That knows I mean, no bounds. Even if you look at some of these guys who who seem so strong and so, right. you know, whether it's um, whether it's Zach or Justin or Bryce or right. Maurice, any of those Maurice, mm -hmm. what's his name? Yeah. Um, all of those guys, they right. on the surface, they look like they're really confident mm -hmm. and they're. None of them are. But but in these two episodes, right. you see all that stuff start going away. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not that confident. Right. I mean, in the, in the next episode where we talk about Bryce, and he's calling, you know, mm -hmm. Justin, and he's saying, yeah. dude, you know, talk to me. Right. You know, I love you, man. I love mm -hmm. you. And, and it's like you can see that he has mm – -hmm. it's really difficult to, to have that sympathy for – Bryce, Bryce. I mean, we'll get to right. it in just a minute, but mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely you definitely can see that right. uh, that pain of adolescence that mm -hmm. then comes up. But you see, you know, the sad part about this is that while they're all projecting confidence, right, they're all extraordinarily insecure right. inside, and I think that's typical of of most adolescents is regardless of what they project, right, they're 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 terribly insecure Absolutely. about who they are. Absolutely. Now. Also at the party, and this is a this is a good. Well, I guess these first three bullets really kind right. of fit yeah, into yeah. this party. Mm -hmm. right. um, is you know <laughs> Clay of course gets there at six fifty five, and Jessica's like, yeah, the party starts at seven. It's six fifty five, but seven really means nine. Right. <laughs> and, and, right. And so Clay has no and experience. And Clay does this. That's right. He has absolutely no experience. In He's this like, area. oh, uh, I'll come okay. back. And she goes, no, you can come help help get things set up. And she hands him the the chips, and he goes, uh, do you want them organized? Any particular way? Do you want them which is like perfect mixed? for him? It, it is exactly what you expect from him. Yeah. And and she goes, make a choice, Clay. Be bold. Be bold. <laughs> and that again really shows this this um, understanding of these different right. characters. I mean, Jessica knows Clay doesn't make decisions. He right. doesn't make choices very well. Right. And so she's like, just be bold, you know. <laughs> Figure out how you want to put the Knock chips out, out and then even as all the different party goers mm -hmm. arrive, you know he's still he's like still refilling them and everything. Chips. He's like right. he, he's monitoring them, making sure that they're okay, doing everything right all the time. Right, of course, mm -hmm. until Hannah arrives. Yeah, and then Hannah arrives and she gets his attention and right. and is focused on because she wasn't supposed to go to that. Party, right, right, right. She wasn't going to be there. So he was more than pleasantly surprised. Right, right. So, so. We get to this 
this entire interaction between the two. And I think one of the things that I like about how they they filmed this mm -hmm. is you you bounce back and forth between right. yeah, yeah. the the memory right. and, and that she's mm -hmm. explaining on the tape, right. Clay's memory of what happened, and then of course the present, present time. Right. Mm -hmm. And when, as they break it up like that, you can you can sort of get a better indication of how each of them remember feeling at the right. time. Right. And so you have this, you know, they're sitting there talking to each other, and Clay is reflecting back about how nervous he was and how, you know, he didn't know what to say, he didn't know right. what to do. And she's reflecting back and thinking, I didn't know what to say, I didn't know what to do. And all the while, you know, they're making jokes with each other and they're, right. you know, you know, looking natural mm -hmm. while having absolutely no idea what they're doing. And yeah, the other thing I thought about this makes you think of the parties that you went to mm -hmm. when you were growing up, you know, right. and you remember how awkward you felt right. and how insecure you were. The other thing that struck me about these parties is as I watched the parties, especially the red cups, I was thinking, this looks more like a college party. But then it, I reminded myself, this is what high school, this is what high school kids are doing. Right. You know, you go on right. vacation and leave your kids home alone. This could happen. Mm -hmm. This th that is the drinking. You know these, and I thought these high school kids dragging in this keg of beer, right? You know, and smoking. You know, yeah. all the smoke filling the room, probably weed, um, and all these these high school kids drinking to excess, right. and then driving, of right. course. You know, so but uh, but again, parents beware. Yeah, and, and I'll say that, um, that all a lot of that isn't all that new. Like I remember when I was in high school. Um, mom, I hope you're not listening. There, there were, there were guys when I was in high school that had parties like that. I mean, yeah. they would have, you know, cake parties and things. Right. And, and I just, you, you wonder, where did they get those things? Cause I, I was, you, you know, I, I didn't go to a lot but of those you parties. Went through, you, you saw this firsthand. Right. 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 Um, and, and you would go and you would, you would see, and they would talk about these things. And then you learned that, well, there's a store. Mm -hmm. you know over there that's sort of in this back on this back road right. they'll and, sell you this stuff and nobody's and, gonna check mm -hmm. right right and and students just as te teenagers just find a way to yeah. to get the stuff they always find a way yeah nature finds a way that's right you always like that Jurassic that's I your do. favorite Jurassic Park line I love that line yeah <laughs> I'm thinking of other Jurassic Park lines um so so but the that the bounce back and forth in time allows mm -hmm. us to really get a good feel for how they were misinterpreting each other right they right. weren't mm -hmm. oh they were oh my gosh they were yeah yeah they and it was so um oh it's painful to think about it, <laughs> it is. really is when you think of the, the the struggle that justin and jessica have right you know it just goes on and on and, on, and they just can't get it right mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. Yeah, as hard as they try, right? They, they just can't. And and there's the little pieces that you know influence everything and yeah. affect everything. And um, and, and to jumping down, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip the the line there from Sky. But mm -hmm. you know Hannah's projection of trauma on Clay when they were in the mm -hmm. room, and you know they're. I, I mean I don't know I don't know about you, but when when Clay first like went in and kissed her, right. It was you, you. You couldn't help but cheer for him. You know, it was like, "Great job, man!" You know, because that that was. But he got courage pretty fast. I was just gonna say that was almost out of out of character was, because he just went for it, and you were hoping that he would, but right. it, it wasn't completely within his character to do that. Mm -hmm. And then you know they they of course go into the room and they're kissing, and then his character returns. He he stops and he goes, "Is this okay?" <laughs> Is this all right? With permission. And and yeah. you know, it was just it was it was sweet. It was exactly what you would expect from Clay. In contrast to right, okay. right, some of the other we'll things that we'll talk about. Yeah. Um. So and and of course, he was doing that without having any idea about any right. of that other stuff. Mm -hmm. And so that's right. He didn't know any of that. Right. Before, right. And so you know, the the couple of things that we have going on here is, as as they're as they're kissing and everything. Hannah's narrating a mm -hmm. little bit through the tapes, and she starts to talk about. Um, on she started to see in Clay all of these other things, right. mm -hmm. the Justin, 
the um, Zach, the the other guys that have mis mm -hmm. mistreated her, and she started to kind of freak out right. a little bit, mm -hmm. and she yeah. pushed him away, Bryce grabbing her by the right. fanny that day, and right, and, and and included in those memories were things that she remembers Clay doing, um, right. like laughing about some of the things that people said or smiling at different things, and and she um, she pushes him away, right, and. What have, what I think is important to, to say is that that is, not that I would say she has PTSD, um, but that is an approximation but of it's PTSD. A, and it is. It's, it is, and um, um, you can see the depth right. of the um, injuries right. that have been, right. and, and again, we've talked many times about this, none of them alone. Mm -hmm. Would have right. been a problem, right. but it was the accumulation right. of uh, recurring insults right. and affronts and, and assaults that um, um, just became overwhelming. Right. And you really see it in that scene because she does have a PTSD-like right. um, experience. Right. Yeah. What, what what happens with PTSD is when you're you experience a traumatic event or traumatic right. events or or and and I, I guess. It, should say right off at the beginning, traumatic event is somewhat subjective. Right. Um, what's traumatic to one person may not be may traumatic not. to somebody else. Right. You know, somebody standing in line at a fast, uh, like a convenience store, mm -hmm. and somebody walking by and grabbing your backside, to one person right. that may be right. traumatic, for another person that may not be traumatic. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, so it's difficult, there is some subjectivity to it. That's right. Um, but when you consider the totality of her experiences, right. And what that was, you know, it was associated with that list, right. you know, which was part of the damage. You know, right. had the list not appeared, maybe the grabbing right. wouldn't have been as, as uh, traumatic. Right. But when you think of the context. Right. It, well, and, and had the picture with um, Justin right. at the very beginning mm -hmm. not happened, the list right. may not have mattered, and that. Right. So it, it, it is the accumulation. Mm -hmm. um, but then what happens is you have those traumatic events, and then when you're in a situation where there are triggers or right. something that happens that's again either approximates or is similar to that mm -hmm. one of those traumatic events. Your brain sort of is, is right. triggered into you know a startle response. Right. It's triggered into a fight or flight. It's triggered into some type of way to I got to protect myself. And that's how exactly how the brain works. Right. You know, you've been through a traumatic experience. You remember it. When it comes up again, you mm -hmm. recall it. Right. You know, and and, the brain is going to do what it has to do to protect itself. And, and exactly. I mean, that that is a perfectly natural, normal, mm -hmm. healthy mm -hmm. thing that we need it to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Because if your brain thinks it's in danger, right? Um, because it's been in danger before, right. it's got to say, "Hey, let's get to safety." Mm -hmm. So, so that's what was going on there when they were sitting in that in in, in Jessica's bedroom, bedroom. Right. and she started having those flash mm -hmm. flashbacks, flashbacks in her right. mind. And she pushes him away and you know yells at him to leave and to go right. away. And again, it's heartbreaking when you hear her say, you know, get away, go. And then the narration from the tape saying, but I don't really want but you I, to go. Right. That was the sad part. Yeah. And and you know, all Clay hears mm -hmm. is, I wanted you to go. Right. I wanted you to leave. And you know, and then I wanted you to stay, <laughs> and, and he right. says, "You know, why didn't I just do that? It, right. it is all my fault." Mm -hmm. he, he kind of tunes all this other stuff out, like mm -hmm. when Hannah actually says, "You don't really deserve to be on this tape, but if I'm going to tell my whole story, you had yeah, to be yeah, here." Right. Mm -hmm. And and he doesn't hear that. Right. All he hears was, "You know, you, I needed you to stay, right. and you mm -hmm. didn't." And um, and how would he have known? And Tony tried to. Talk to him about it, and he didn't mm -hmm. get it from Tony either. No, no, uh, no. Tony, the uh, unhelpful Yoda. The unhelpful Yoda. <laughs> yeah, right. That uh, <laughs> that was a fantastic line. <laughs> I'm gonna start calling you that. The unhelpful Yoda. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> cross the bow. <laughs> <laughs> but it's 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 so um, it, it's so consistent and mm -hmm. indicative of these kinds of issues that you have, you know, someone. You know, in a situation like this, in a in a predicament like this, mm -hmm. and then they respond to some memory, some experience from the past, and the other person has no idea what to do. Right. Um, they mm -hmm. respond. You know, I think arguably Clay responded mm -hmm. correctly. Right. 
Yeah. Though, you know, he, he later goes back and, you know, Clay thinks about what he should have done. He goes back and thinks about, well, I should have stayed and I should have talked to her and I should have told her that and I they, loved her and I right. should have told her this and that. And they replay that scene, yeah. you know, when they, what, sh what he should have done. Right. And how many of us have done that? Oh, jeez. You know, as I was thinking about that, I was like, man, I've done that so many times. So what many I times. should have done, right. what I could have done if I'd rewritten the script. Right. Mm. And, and it's, it's, you know, and of course you can't. No. And, mm. but you can beat yourself up and, 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 at this part in the in the program, of course, this is when he's there with Tony and he's standing on the ledge of mm -hmm. that yes. sort of like overhang there. The, the escarpment. Was, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And and you know, Tony's like, hey, hey man. step back. And and he's like, Well, what would happen? You know, what would be mm -hmm. and, and I, I like Tony a lot too, sure. but it's just it, he's struggling with uh, you know, the, the probably one of the most difficult emotions for us to deal with and that is regret yeah he he, he is regret regretting not doing mm -hmm. what he now knows that he would that he should have done mm -hmm. um and and you know he's he's, he's carrying everybody's guilt though yes he he's carrying his which is profound but he's carrying everybody else's too right he knows what everybody has done to this to this object that he loved so much. Right. So he's carrying all that stuff. That's right. what the tapes did to him. Yeah. It was just one after another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Him more so than anyone yeah. else. Because yeah, every, right. even the others who are really, really damaged, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Justin, for example, yeah. uh, Alex, oh who are really, really damaged by all of this, mm -hmm. even though they are injured, they, they're not carrying. They, they're still angry with Jess, with, with Hannah. Right. You know, right. Justin is still angry mm -hmm. with Hannah. If mm -hmm. she wouldn't have done this, then all this. If we could just make all this go away. Right. And 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 Clay's like, no, mm -hmm. we need to look at what's happening. We need to fix this. We need to move. Right. So, um, and, and of course, Hannah says that those uh, those famous <laughs> terrible lines. You know, I did. I didn't deserve to be with a guy like you. What do you do? Like it's what not do you. Do it's me right she says she actually says that mm -hmm. it's not you it's me and and all of this is happening at that time when you know clay's thinking about what he should have done and it's just we we put ourselves into those situations we put ourselves into those scenarios where we are thinking about what we should have done mm -hmm. what we could have done and you know, we're we're saying that these things aren't going to work out, not because they won't work out, but because we can't imagine them working mm -hmm. out. Right. And there's a big difference between between you know exploring things and you know exploring your identity mm -hmm. and figuring out who you are, and saying sort of writing it off from the beginning and saying, nope, there's no way this is going right. to work out. I'm not good enough. You know, I don't right. deserve you and, and not even giving it a try. Right. And you know, we have this recurring theme here of what I should have done. Right. Okay. And, and it, and it's a theme throughout, but it really culminates in this episode of right. what I should have done. Clay did it and right. other people right. are doing it now, what I should have done. Right. And we talk about this, this, um, series, um, being a vehicle for us, for people to talk about suicide, right? And uh, we're, and I'm hoping that as as people have watched the series, that this issue of what I should have done mm -hmm. um, hits home, right. because when you're confronted with this, this is what you should have done. Right. So don't sit back and wonder whether you should have or not. Take action. Right. And I think that's the other the other theme. Uh, and and I like I love about this series is mm -hmm. it is it has um, impelled all of us to talk about it right. and to say the word suicide right. you know do you mean suicide let's talk about it yeah you know take take the cloak off this thing right mm -hmm. yeah absolutely it's um yeah use the words say right. what you're feeling mm -hmm. say what you're thinking you know, are you going to do something harm are you going to harm yourself or are you going mm -hmm. to do something stupid no are you contemplating are you thinking about killing yourself right Let's just talk about that. Right, right. Mm -hmm. and, and that goes to the last sort of quote that we have here, the last piece that we have here from this episode. And that was from, from Clay's from our interruption lovely with Sky. Sky. I want to know Do so you, much more about Sky. Man. She's awesome. She's awesome. Jeez. Oh. Because talk about somebody that doesn't care what other people think, um, on the outside at least. Right. You know, right. and, and 
but you know, she but we learn as unhelpful Yoda said you know we don't really know what's going on inside yeah. her we don't right. really know what she's thinking but she you know she's talking about and, and kind of confronting clay about a few mm -hmm. things and clay grabs her arm and pulls it out and you can see cuts on her on her arm and she he goes well what's that what's this and right. he goes she says you know that's what you do instead of killing yourself right and you know so we have that of course i think that this whole this whole series would be remiss without mentioning self-harm right, you know sure. um what, what do they call it non-suicidal self-injury right mm -hmm. and and that's what we have here with sky is it's non-suicidal kind of, right right yeah mm -hmm. as she said it's not it's what you do instead of killing yourself right. it, it, there's not an intent to kill yourself there's not an intent for suicide mm -hmm. it's just hurting yourself um and and to some extent, it's you know it, it's punishing yourself. You know, okay. people who people who cut themselves or do other things to injure themselves, they talk about wanting to feel again, wanting to mm -hmm. um, see that they're still alive, wanting mm -hmm. to have those sensations. Mm -hmm. um, and we we did a whole podcast on this yeah. about a you know it's been some time ago now, but months. Yeah, it was a um, it's a difficult topic because mm -hmm. people people freak out when they see that. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know we, we see it a lot. We see it very often, um, especially of course in teenagers. Right. Uh, but even adults, we yeah. see uh, self injurious behavior. We do. Yeah. Uh, and and it's really um, it's difficult to know what to do mm -hmm. to to manage that. But if you see somebody who's who's injuring themselves, you know, don't. I don't want to say don't take them to the hospital. You know, don't. It, don't go overboard. Don't right. Um, right. don't make things worse by overreacting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, encourage them to talk to somebody. Encourage them right. to see a therapist or or a psychologist or something, um, so that they can talk about what's going on and, and mm -hmm. figure out how to feel and how to uh, right. see themselves as alive in a mm -hmm. healthier way. So, yep. Any other points from no Clay's tape? This was exhausting watching this one. It was. It was really good. But then there was the next, then we flipped <laughs> the tape over. Right. And we got to side B, and that was Bryce. Um, finally get to Bryce. Oh, the way that this episode started with the, the just the flash bulb of the, the hot tub, and then it kind of gets into what happened, and she kind of introduces it as the beginning of the worst day of her life. Mm -hmm. And so... So this episode, it 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 really, it it really pulls it all together, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. because what what happens here is we see a lot of conflict in Hannah's family. Right. Uh, the parents are really. This started a couple of episodes ago, but things really start getting bad in the family as it for financial reasons. Mm -hmm. the, this, the pharmacy isn't doing as well as they would have hoped, and so they're behind on their their rent and they're doing everything. And this is where we see Hannah sort of starting to t turn it all on herself. Right. And that's what we were talking about earlier, that, that that's the major change right. that really occurred. She, she lacks that self-reflection throughout all the other episodes, mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. the other tapes. And finally, um, she's starting to turn her anger inward. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and this, and it's for a very concrete reasons right. because, right. you know, she took right. on the responsibility of taking the deposit. Mm -hmm. And then, um, again, one mm -hmm. of those subtle things is she's trying to get in the, in the car right. and she gets a phone call from clay. Mm -hmm. And so she takes a call from clay and you can see she gets distracted. Right. She starts talking about going to meet up to get her final check from the mm -hmm. Crestmont. And she completely forgets about the deposit up on the on the roof of the and car. And you already know that her parents are struggling financially because right. they had set the, that scene up. Right. As soon as she put it on the roof of the car, you knew you was knew what was going to happen. You next. knew it was going to happen. You didn't know why, yeah. but you knew that that was not going to make it yeah. into the inside of the car. Yeah. Right. And, and so, I've done that a few times. A few times. I remember losing coffee when I used to put beverage container. I don't do that anymore. No. No, I had to lose a few. <laughs> <laughs> a few phones too. Yeah. I never did, but there have been a few phones that have been, ended up on the street. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you just, true. you know, and you knew, you knew, what was you knew it was going to happen. And so, and then of course, as you see, it's driving down. He's like, no. <laughs> and then it goes, look, it just flips off, and it's like, okay. There oh goes. my god. So, but but she really starts taking that on herself mm -hmm. now because right. 
that was her fault. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that was her fault. That was her responsibility because right. she took on that responsibility. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, of course, she her mom gets really upset with her. Um, she offers for them to take her money, you know, the money that she had from the She right. offers to babysit and give money, and she offers for them to take her, her mm -hmm. college, college fund. fund. Right. Um, but they don't, you know, they're, right. they're struggling and trying to figure out what to do. And mm -hmm. so it's the, again, we have that shift where it's like, okay, this was my fault. Right. Maybe this is all my fault. Mm -hmm. And, and we see those kinds of tendencies now starting to come out. Yep. Starting to turn it, <laughs> trying to right. turn it inward. Mm -hmm. So, so at the, after all of that, um, I, I think that the scene is, is supposed to sort of depict that the parents, mm -hmm. You know, were in the living room talking about what to do and what mm -hmm. they were going, trying to figure out what they're going to Ooh, do. They were on the sofa, <clears throat> right? Yeah. And the parents both fell asleep on the sofa. Right. And Hannah goes out to say something, and because she's going to walk, she wants to go for a walk. She wants to go for a walk, right? And so, mom, sort <clears throat> of half asleep, half awake, says, mm -hmm. "It's just like you know, put on a jacket or something. Um, it's cold blah, or something." Blah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so Hannah leaves. Right. And she walks and walks and walks and ends up at Bryce's house because she hears the, the lure, party. the lure mm -hmm. of the party. Right. And once again, good message for parents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Parties can be a problem. Right. Bad things can happen at these parties. Right. So be very, very careful. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. not necessarily to say that you ban your kid from all no. the parties. No. But it's to say, just be mindful. You need to know that your child is going into a high risk situation when they go to a party. And all the things that we saw at these parties do happen and can happen. So be very, very cautious. But you have to allow your kids to go. Right. You know, you can't you can't put them in a bubble. Right. You cannot protect them from this. They don't do it now, they're gonna do it as soon as they go to college. Right. Right. So and so you better to do it while they're with you. Right. It's 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 about education, mm -hmm. it's right. about empowering, it's mm -hmm. about all of that. But Hannah Hannah was hurt. She was weak mm -hmm. at that time. She was um, fragile. Right. And she's walking and she hears the, the party, the, the sound of good times mm -hmm. yeah. and everything. And she walks and she meets them up, meets up with them at Bryce's house. And um, and she gets, it, it's, it, well, for just, it, it is what it is. It was peer pressure that got her into the hot tub. She, none of and Jessica said, none of us have bathing suits. Right. You know, which, yeah. again, shouldn't be a problem for anybody. Right. Um, and the victim isn't the temptress. Right. Okay? Right. We all understand that. But again, these are teenage boys with raging hormones. Right. Who think they're entitled. Who think they're entitled. That's a really important point as we get, as we talk about Bryce. Right. Uh, because, of course, what we... You know, if you if you saw the program, you know that what happens is there's a couple, a, a few couples in the hot tub, and then right. there's Bryce, and then there's Hannah sitting sort of opposite each other, and one couple by one couple, all of a sudden Bryce and Hannah are left alone in the hot tub, mm -hmm. and I I think that, you know, you as soon as as soon as the bubble stopped, yep. it was like. Here, oh you know. boy, mm -hmm. oh boy, mm -hmm. and so it it's um, it's painful because you hear and you, you hear it in other. I've heard it in other movies and other programs, but the words that Bryce is saying while he while he's assaulting her, mm -hmm. he goes, "We're having fun." Yeah, yeah. you know, hey, you know, it's okay. Just relax, just relax, mm -hmm. and. The um, and you you see the. She starts out fighting, mm -hmm. and then, and then she gives up. Right. And mm -hmm. then you know she's making the fist, and then when she just lets the fist go, and she's just laying there, sort of staring. Um, it's it's it's, it is it is probably one of the most um emotionally charged scenes of that type in a movie that I've, mm -hmm. that I've seen. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't, it, there's really nothing shown, right? but it's, it's really intense. And, but I, I think that 
there's a lot of information mm -hmm. in, in that scene. Yep. Um, the the way that you know people talk about sexual assaults and they you know they say you know they, they talk about fighting back and they talk about you know do this and do that. Wow. And, and you the the reality mm -hmm. is that if you can, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Do it. But because someone couldn't, right, doesn't mean that they're weak. It doesn't mean that they asked for it. It doesn't mean that they allowed it to happen. It mm -hmm. doesn't mean, you know, you, you know, you, you mentioned the, um, the you, you can't blame the temptress. Sure. She wasn't asking for any of that. She, she said no. Right. Um, she, attempted to stop it. She did everything mm -hmm. that you would want and hope that she would do. Um, but it wasn't enough. And yet when quizzed later about it, mm. said, well, no, I didn't do that. No, I didn't do that. Right. And then she becomes right. an accomplice. Right. Right. It and puts, it puts women in a hole. Right. And, and so, the, I, I think that one of the things that I have learned in in working with um, in the various capacities that I work with the different populations mm -hmm. of people that I work with, I think that I, I'm consistently surprised, and maybe I should stop being surprised, but I, it, it is surprising to me how many people have had that kind of experience. Mm -hmm. How many mm -hmm. women have had that experience that that Hannah had right. uh, the sexual assault or, mm -hmm. or and it, it's yeah. it's and I don't I have to feel like the primary statistics that are out there mm -hmm. for it I think it's about a third or so I have to feel like those are low it's got to be an underestimate it has to be an mm -hmm. underestimate right and and so you know what it makes me think of when it comes to my own daughter, when it comes to um, teenage girls mm -hmm. that I work with, we really have to work hard to empower them, to let them know um, what, mm -hmm. you know, saying their rights isn't the correct thing, but but know what they can do, what they should do, how they should do those things, give them the tools and the, mm -hmm. the equipment that they need to be able to, to manage, right. better manage those kinds of situations. Mm -hmm. um, because it's, I don't know that we do a very good job of that. Uh, we don't. I mean, don't, some parents do, but. We don't give them lines to use. We don't give them ways to get out of these situations. Right. We don't give them enough information about how to avoid getting mm -hmm. into these situations. Right. And I think of the, um, more and more parents are doing this now. You know, if you do drink, call me, I'll come and get you. Right. There won't be any questions. Right. You know, call me, I will come right. and get you. And if, and if Hannah would have had that, when these things were happening, that she could have just called her parents and said, come and get me, right. I'm in danger. Right, mm -hmm. like, like, you know, uh, something mm -hmm. just as a, as a simple, quick example that a parent could do, um, you know, talking with their teenage daughters is, is to say, you know, if you go to a party like that, right. and you find yourself in any kind of situation similar to mm -hmm. that, whether it's a hot tub or a room right. or a, a, um, a, a whatever, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, if you find yourself in that situation and as the last couple is leaving <sighs> and it's just you, you and one other guy as that last couple is leaving, that's when you go ahead and get up and get yeah. out of the, right. get, get out to, that's when you can look for your way out because that person is not going to be as likely to right. do anything if that other couple if other is there, couple. if that other people are there. And, and this is why you don't get ever get caught in a situation where you're alone. Right. You know, my daughter, just graduated from college and said we were we always went together right we never left anybody alone anywhere right. Right. and that's what those are the sorts of skills you need to develop right. except now you have to develop them in high school right and you know you have to tell your your children you know when when it starts getting you know people start grabbing you and touching mm -hmm. you inappropriately it's probably time to leave because right. then you're now you're entering a danger zone right and and that may be the best time to leave but Richard you know as well as I do that a lot of that stuff happens at school. But it's happening at school. Well, that's what and, and that's what they said. And it's it's awful because I know high schoolers right. that I talk to who say, "Oh, there's an area of my school that mm -hmm. I don't go to unless I'm unless I have somebody with me, right? Because right. that area of the school is not safe, right? And and it's I, I just keep overusing this, but it's heart heartbreaking to think that mm -hmm. 
we have um, we have these areas in our kids' lives <laughs> where they don't feel protected. Right. In an area where they should feel protected. We built schools when this, I don't think it happened. You right. Know, when these schools were built, these sorts of things. Now you have to have cameras right. all around the school because this stuff does happen. Right. We never had sex in the bathroom. Right. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, it didn't happen. Right. Um, now it happens at everywhere. It happens time. in elementary schools. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so schools were built with, yeah. and this, they didn't have the this institution of school, not right. not necessarily the buildings, but yeah, and the, the institution. Uh, they they just did not I mean, anticipate there are, these things happening. There are places in schools where you don't have access. I mean, right. where you can get caught in some school buildings. Oh right, that's me. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, so the, but they weren't designed with this. And now, if you built a school now, you would say, okay, we have to keep this mm -hmm. open, and yeah. let's not have any uh, inaccessible areas. Right, right. Yeah, it's it's um, it, it's it's unbelievable and and it's it's terrifying to think Jeez. that you know we're, we send our kids to those places and you know noreen you know mentioned that it, it's of course it's primarily girls but there's yeah. you know there, there's situations that happen with males Boys as well same thing you Absolutely. know things mm -hmm. there are there are assaults, sexual assaults that happen to to males as well absolutely and mm -hmm. you know certainly females is there is the Right, the, the um, it's more highest right. um, prevalence, but, right. um, but so it's, often it's just not reported. Right, you people are embarrassed, it. and they 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 you're reported. You're you, you don't report it because you're intimidated. You're um, you're embarrassed. Right, you're afraid, and you're just you just assume nothing's going to happen. And you remember, it depends who the assailant is. Right, if it's one of these alpha males, chances are not much is going to happen right especially if it's a wealthy alpha male right well and we saw in in the previous <clears throat> episode where um you know or well i can't remember if it was this episode or the previous episode it's one of these two um where you know you know jessica is spending mm -hmm. all that time with bryce right and justin is there and and justin says because he raped you right and like you know jessica was of course upset with Justin right. and, and Justin leaves and you know, some other things happen. We'll, we'll talk about just a second, but then like, it, it's sort of, you can mm -hmm. sort of left with the idea that the party kept going, you know, right. everybody was still mm -hmm. hanging out and things were still happening um, for exactly the reason that you were talking mm -hmm. about. But I, I think that one of the last things, I mean, it, it, there's still so many other things to talk about, but um, one of the last things we wanted to talk about with this episode um, is, is Bryce. The bad and the sad is, is what I have there on this slide because right. you know he he is a villain, you know, but he's also he is a type of victim himself. He we've been through 13 episodes, well, 12 episodes to date. We have that have spanned over two or three years of high school. Mm -hmm. We haven't That's seen right. his parents yet. Right. We have not yet seen his parents. <laughs> I was I was struck by that. I said, "Well, eventually we're going to meet his parents. Right. And we're going to see who these people are." And the scene in his house where he has these parties. And right. Where are his parents? Right. And and then you know even at the end of this <clears throat> last episode, not at the end, but it, it, within this last episode, when Clay goes to his house to try to <laughs> get him to yeah. uh, to admit to what he did, um, the parents aren't there. He's hiding marijuana right there on the coffee table. Right on the coffee uh, table. Yeah, ah, my parents are not going to be back for a couple of weeks. Right. Um, there's one episode several weeks back where um, he's talking to his mom on the phone and he's like, ah, you know, everything's fine here. You guys just stay and have fun. Right. Um, so there, there is no connection there. There is, mm -hmm. there is no relationship between him and his parents. No. There's no. Um, he has nobody like that for literally literally and figuratively they don't exist right you know they're, they're just they're just not there this right. is a kid who's raising himself right this is a young child right who's raising himself right mm -hmm. um and it's <clears throat> it's well and you wonder why he and there's no there's no mystery of why he and justin have some common commonalities right i mean they they share this uh, the absence of their parents. And, and I think that you see that best after all of this happens 
and and after you know Justin says that you know calls him a rapist basically right. at that party um, a little later you see Bryce on the phone calling Justin leaving him a voicemail and right. says hey, yeah man why won't you take my call mm -hmm. I don't even understand what's happening right you know I love you man just just call me and it looks like he genuinely misses that relationship right mm -hmm. and, and that's really the first and really only, only time mm -hmm. that we see any of that type of emotion from mm -hmm. Bryce mm -hmm. and and it's um, and th there's just no we just don't see anything like that and mm -hmm. so we have this um, alpha male as right. you as you refer to him who has no supervision mm -hmm. he has nobody sort of guiding him directing him um, you, you made a comment earlier today as we were preparing for this you said that you know what what high school senior sits around and drinks alcohol the way that he does like it's just not not that he's pounding beers or anything but it's like he's drinking hard liquor like in a cup in know. a crystal glass yeah. out of a decanter you yeah. know and he's wandering around the house like the lord of the manor and he's yeah. 17 years old yeah you know? it's it, it's just he, he because of the absence of his parents because right. that there, there's nobody there to create boundaries for him to create expectations right. for him he is sort of left to think I I am the Lord of the manor I and I can have my weed out here and I can drink the alcohol and I can yeah. have parties and and even as he says to clay he says look you can call it rape if you want to mm -hmm. but it, it she's like every other girl they all want it right you know mm -hmm. and and it I think that it really is a mentality that he has developed mm -hmm. based upon the absence of anybody telling him anything different I'm entitled yes and I'm entitled to this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I can just have what I want right mm -hmm. and and so and it's not because he's rich right it's because he's parentless right and the, Justin is parentless right mm -hmm. right and and so we we, we have this and, and I love the part where Justin is talking to Jessica mm -hmm. and he's in some way he's justifying yes. not saying anything not telling her what happened not you know not being angry with Bryce and, and doing anything not about saving it. her right because he was scared and because Bryce helped him you know hey you know he didn't tell he didn't go out and buy new shoes he, he just told me that he had an extra pair of shoes that he mm -hmm. let me have that were my size. <clears throat> right. right. And so, you know, again, we see this relationship mm -hmm. that Bryce has with, um, uh, with Justin. Justin, right. But that is really the only place right. that we see Bryce have mm -hmm. any form of relationship. And even right. that relationship isn't healthy. And once again, we see the complicated nature of what their struggles are mm -hmm. and their struggles with each other. Right. They're not card, these are not cardboard two dimensional figures. Right. Each one of these kids had complex uh, struggles. And right. so, as parents, as, as you deal with your children, remember these are not. Um, Th th these are not flat. They're not two-dimensional. Right. They're very, very complex. Right. Much more complex than we. And I think about Inside Out. You know, right. where we talked about that this morning. That um, anger. You know, yeah. it, it's always there. It's always present. Okay. Right. But when when they were having that argument at the table, and Riley got angry with her dad. Right. And it wasn't really anger. There was a lot of other stuff going on. Right. You know. Yeah. And and dad, you know. Acknowledge more than just anger, right. because it's not a single dimension. Yeah, absolutely. It, there, there's so <laughs> much more going on, and it's such, so much. We're, we're much more complex mm -hmm. than than just these absolutely um, when, single when, emotions. When children react angrily, you're seeing anger, but geez, peek behind the curtain because right. there's a lot of other stuff going on. Right, and you got to deal with all of it. And the massive thing, massively important thing with Bryce is that there's no one there. There's, to, to, to do give that. any guidance, to do right. any of that for him. To set any limits, to right. guide him. No, it's yeah. so sad. So if he, because if he's a senior this year, we, that that would put him a year ahead of Clay. Yeah, and right. so that just means that this started when he was in, when he was a sophomore. The, the program yeah. started when he was a sophomore. And so for those three years, we don't see, you never see any it. significant involvement. Right. 
We don't even see his. There's no acknowledgement of his parents at any of the basketball games. Right. Um, remember, he was he was made the captain of the team, mm -hmm. and his parents, Terrible as far as we know, his parents weren't there yeah. mm -hmm. to to cheer him on or anything. And so again, it, it's not to to justify his actions in any way, but it's to say that those actions exist within a context, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to to re completely remove that context would right. be. Um, would would not give us the full picture of mm -hmm. everything that's going on. And and again, it gives you pause to mm -hmm. say, well, wait a minute, before you make a judgment, let's make sure we understand right. what this person is going through. Right. Mm -hmm. um, we, right. It goes back to what yeah. unhelpful Yoda said that we don't know what's going on inside right. that person. That's right. Um, mm -hmm. Now, again, that's not to say that give any justification for Bryce's actions. Right. It's just that um, he was damaged as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Though in a different way, right? So, um, but he turned his against others. Hannah turned hers against herself. Right, right. indeed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Um, so, so <clears throat> it, it was heavy. It was heavy, and and, and again, the scene. Um, it was just so. It, it was so uh, raw, uh, emotionally raw. It was her resignation mm -hmm. that was so painful. Right. She couldn't do anything about right. it. I mean, he's a he's an athlete. He's a high school athlete. Right. She's not. She's right. a little pudgy. And when and when um, she's not a cheerleader or a gymnast or something. She's just a little. She's a little young girl. Right. And he's a he's a right. And when he was hitting, when he was beating up Clay, it was yeah. like Jeez. that was a little brutal. <laughs> and then at the end, he's like, "Oh, come on, man. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to hand it off to you." And then gives him a gives him a drink. with a drink. It's like, okay, grief, man. It's a, it's, <laughs> it teeters on sociopathic. Uh, mm -hmm. So he's he's a boarding on the sociopathic. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's problematic. Right. So, um, so those were those were two intense, intense episodes. They were, and um, but I think that that's I, all we pulled from that. Uh, I mean, there's other things that we could pull from it, right. but but. That, that was all that we did. So, um, but you know what I, else I liked? I liked that each week the characters become more complex. Well, you know, I love that increase in complexity. I, I think that, you know, next week is our last episode. Mm -hmm. um, and last, next week, we're going to talk about um, the final episode, uh, episode 13. Um, and we're not going to do episode 14? Well, we will <laughs> touch on episode 14 a little bit. Um, but the, the, what I was thinking that we could do next week as well is maybe we could tease some of that apart because I think that, you know, what we really want people to understand is that every character in this program, they really exist. Yeah, they're out there. Every school has mm -hmm. a Clay. Right. Every school has a Hannah, mm -hmm. has a Jessica, has a Justin, has a Bryce. Yeah, absolutely. Every school has one of those characters, one mm -hmm. of those people, um, and sometimes more than right. one per person. Mm -hmm. And and I think that it might be an interesting exercise to kind of go through and, and tease some of that apart from the individual students' right. perspective, but also from the parents, mm -hmm. because we have we have a lot of different parenting styles depicted in this program. Right. You know, you have our favorite, which is uh, Clay's parents. Right. Love Clay's parents. That was funny. Are you and his dad? Mm -hmm. Were they reading cereal that yeah. morning? <laughs> it's always eating something. Um, but you, you have Clay's parents who I, I think did a really good job with things. But then you have Zach's parents and you have Alex's parents and you have Justin's parents. I mean, there are some of those parents that it's like you just want to mm. really. Um, Justin's. Uh, Justin's mom just is despicable. Um, as bad as Zach's parent mom no. is. No. No. Uh, Justin's, you know, when you were saying that about Justin, uh, Zach's parents a couple weeks ago, I was like, wait, buddy, wait. just wait until you meet right. Justin's parents. Oh, um, his that mom boyfriend. and that, that boyfriend, boyfriend, when he was holding him it's against the wall and choking him, it was like, and then Justin, oh, it'd make you cry. Justin looks at him and says, mom. And she goes, and she just shakes her head and she walks, walks into away. the way. It's like, and closes the door. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's painful. Mm -hmm. um, and and I again, not to not to belabor it, but <clears throat> that is that happens yeah. every day. Mm -hmm. 
It's happening every everywhere. Day. It's happening absolutely everywhere. Every day. We see we see kids um, here in the office. We see kids that we work with in schools, and that kind of stuff happens all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and to think and okay, we've already been going for an hour, but it's like I want to even say, <laughs> I want to keep going because you know it's okay. You, you see that stuff happening. And then you give them a standardized test and say, okay, let's see what you know. How in the world could any of these characters be expected to perform in school? Okay, you opened it up. I know. It's like, no, we'll save it for next what week. Are, but what are schools doing right now? They're trying to standardize everything. Mm -hmm. Common core. Yeah. Everybody in the same place. Um, zero tolerance policies. Yeah. All, all these things are to make everybody the same. We'll do it next week. It's, okay. Uh, it's, it just makes me insane that schools don't acknowledge right. that educational reformers don't acknowledge that all of these kids are bringing all of this stuff to school. All of it. And you take a kid, you take one kid who grows clay, who's mm -hmm. had all these advantages, right. taking the same test beside Justin, right, who's getting beaten up and knocked around by right. this scumbag of a of a right. boyfriend and they take the same test and they're expected to they're both expected to pass it right it, it, it who makes these rules and, and and it's it's the it's the tendency that we have to just brush it under the <clears throat> rug act like it doesn't exist act like it's not happening and, the, and you know jessica right poor child's drunk most of the time right but she's expected to pass these same tests right she's drunk for a good reason right you know, she's been yeah. assaulted. All this stuff is happening to her. Right. And no, just sit down and take yeah. this final test and yep. take this end of course exam. And if you don't pass it, it could affect the rest of your life. The rest of your life. Like this isn't happening. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Can we talk about that next week? Uh, I we have a lot to talk about next week. All right. So we're, we're episode 13, but then we have all this other stuff. It, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, Ah, oh, it makes me so frustrated because it's just not. No. I want to say it's not fair, but because it's not, and it's not that anything has to be fair or we're no, guaranteed that anything is fair, but we don't. That doesn't mean that we have to make it unfair. Yeah, okay, it's. Let's not use the word fair. Let's use the word stupid. <laughs> Somebody's stupid <laughs> to not acknowledge these. Yeah. The, yeah. Okay. I, I agree with you. You know I agree with you. It leaves me speechless. I know. The stupidity of it all leaves me leaves me yeah. absolutely speechless. It, it, but it's the it's it's these types of programs that really you know when you when you think about when you think about real life, mm. you see that and you right. uh, you, you pulled your coffee cup coffee, coffee cup down. Noreen says she likes your coffee cup. Noreen <laughs> And it said up there, the, the little thing says, my brain has too many tabs open. Yeah. That's what it says up there. And that's not like a potato on my head. That's, it's see that brain? brain. <laughs> that's our brain. That's our model so, of a brain. But, um, I'm going to make Bernie sit here next. <laughs> um, but no, it, it, it gets my, it, it makes my blood boil to think of how 20%, at least 20% of children have these kinds of struggles. And yet they're expected to perform at the same level in the same way as kids who have all the advantages right. and none of the pressures. Right. I mean, yeah. It's, um, it's sad. Yeah. It's, it's unfortunate. And, and again, the, everything that depicted in this program, every, every character, every, every character exists, exists. These weren't dreamt up. They, these kids exist. Yeah. So, um, but we'll, we'll talk more about that next week. Um, okay. And, and wrap up. The series. It's too bad. I don't like to see this come to an end. No, but, but we'll we'll find we'll find a new series. Okay. If you if if you're listening and you know of a, a another series that kind of touches on some of this mm -hmm. stuff or that doesn't touch on some of this stuff, but we can touches kind of on other things. We can kind of right. dissect some things out of it. Uh, mm -hmm. We've said it before that um, you know uh, there's a lot of psychological principles right. in most things that we watch and mm -hmm. are exposed to. So right, it'll be great. So, all right, anything else? No, that's all. You're not mad about anything else? Oh, gosh. So we will be Good back morning. next Thursday, which would be 
June 22nd. There's a reason why international agencies ban torture. Why is that? You, you don't do that to helpless people. Oh, I thought you were, I thought it, it was. There's nice. a good reason why we, why yeah. torture is banned. You don't take somebody helpless and torment them. Right, yeah. So, so there's the last slide. It, it shows uh, we are going to be here on the 622. 622 at 630. Okay. Um, and we will be here for that last episode. And here. Um, we hope that you are able to join us and Help listen in and um, ask some questions. Help salt but never found. That's Good old that. Mr. P. Oh, next week is all on Mr. Porter. <laughs> You knew it's all it. on you, Mr. Porter. You knew it was going to come back to it's Mr. Porter. It's all on you. So, all right. So, okay. thank you all for joining us. We had yeah. a few people join us tonight, so that was great. We really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, and but join us next week as we yeah, come back. wrap it up and right. uh, again invite your friends. Mm -hmm. It'll be great. So until then, stay happy, stay healthy, and forget to be afraid. <laughs>